Hey guys, Greg Benz here. Today I want to show you the most amazing way to extract color out of Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. It's one of the best kept secrets. I can't believe that more people don't talk about it. It's camera calibration. And if you've never used this tool, I can understand why you'd look at it and think, well, I don't want to calibrate my camera, but it's actually one of the best ways to pull color out of your images. Let's dive right into Lightroom here and let me show you what I'm talking about. So here's a scene of coastal California. I've already made a few basic adjustments to the highlights, shadows, and blacks, as you can see here, as well as a slight uh, change in white balance. So the original raw looked like this, and I just made a few tweaks like this, just to bring out a little bit more of that sunset color and balance the image out a little bit more overall. Now, Normally, if you're gonna play with color in Lightroom, you might try and play with something like Vibrance, but as you'll see, the blues can get really nasty. When you push Vibrance up, it's gonna have some unwanted color effects in your image, and things like blue in the sky are oftentimes gonna be where the problems show up. So I find that usually doesn't do exactly what I want it to do. You can try saturation, and saturation does a really nice job here. I think it, it looks great. If we didn't have any other tools, then this would be amazing. We can see how far we can push this thing. Somewhere around 35 points seems to be about the limit. I don't wanna oversaturate the area around the sun. So that's about where I would push this image. Let's go ahead and save that marker there. We'll just call that um, saturation. That's the approach we took there. Let's zero that out. So that's one valid approach. Another might be to go down into the HSL tab and try and play with the different color sliders. So obviously this looks fairly orange. Let's try and push up the orange. And one thing you'll immediately notice is color banding. That's a very common problem with this tool. The sky here looks terrible, especially right here and here and here. Now we could push up some of the adjacent channels to try and minimize that, but honestly, um, I just don't think there's any form of HSL that's going to look great here, but let's, let's dial it in to the point where it looks about as good as it can be. And we'll just kind of mark that off as a reference. So if we're, if we're more conservative with these adjustments, then it's not going to show the banding as much, but it's still present. That looks a little unnatural with this colorless cloud versus this reddish tone versus the orange tones over here. But let's go ahead and save that. We'll just call it HSL for reference. And then let's zero these back out here so they're turned off. And now we'll jump down to camera calibration. Looks very intimidating. The only thing you really need to play with here are these three saturation sliders found under red, green, and blue. And each one of them is incredibly powerful. If I go and just move up the red, which is usually the one that I go to first, tends to have the most pleasing effect, especially for sunrise or sunset skies. The uh, greens can really draw out a lot of kind of yellow tones. As you see here, pretty quickly gets a little bit kind of oversaturated. In fact, let's, um, let's zero that out so you can just see the individual channels here. And this is a bit of a process of playing around. I don't have a magic formula for you. Each image is a little bit different, but these are the three sliders you need to play with. So you can see that the, the green has a pretty nice and, and fairly similar effect. So the, the red, green, and blue don't get lulled into thinking that they specifically target those colors. They actually adjust a, a really broad range. They're just a little bit more specific near these colors. And then there's the blue, which of course is hitting the blue, but also some red. So all three of them are adjusting the sun, but generally speaking, what I saw there was that the red had probably the most pleasing effect to the image. The blue was maybe the next most. We can kind of punch that up a bit. And I like how it's bringing out more color here in the clouds. It gives more of a glow effect because the sunset color is pushing deeper into the clouds. And then the green here, I think you just want to add a touch perhaps, or maybe even none, just enough to bring up the sun the amount you want, because it seems to target the sun specifically. In fact, you could even use it as a way to go negative to bring down the sun. And that would let us push up the red and blue even further. So the advantage of that approach would be by bringing some of this down, we can push even deeper into the clouds. And I, I do like that effect. That has a really nice look to it. Now, once I have this as a base, I can still go back and I could add saturation or play with HSL. That's certainly an option. 
but I don't think I need to here. Let's go ahead and, and save this for comparison as well as camera calibration. And let's just take a look at these. So here's with the camera calibration versus saturation. And they're, they're fairly close. This is an image where saturation does a pretty good job. But to my eye, the camera calibration looks better. It pushes deeper into the clouds, has more of a glow look to it. And I would say that camera calibration is better here. Some images, it's not even close. Some images, camera calibration is much better just for the simple reason that saturation is going to affect all the colors in the image. So this is an image that is mostly yellow. So it's a pretty easy one for saturation to get right. In some images, if you had a lot of greens or blues or other colors in the periphery around it, then just pushing the saturation slider may not work. For example, if I had flowers in the foreground, I might oversaturate the flowers trying to get more color out of the sunset. Even though camera calibration wins by a little bit here, a lot of times it's actually dramatically better. And then let's take a look at HSL, which again just isn't quite there. It still looks nice. It's not bad here. I don't know that a lot of people notice right off the bat, but I still see the banding here. And as I further process this image, I think that's gonna come out a little bit more. So to me, clearly camera calibration is the winner. And of course you can combine these approaches. Now, a few other comments about this. Uh, I showed you how to do this in Lightroom. If we were to jump over to Photoshop, Adobe Camera Raw has the exact same setting. So it's under this little camera tab here, it's the very last adjustment tab, just like in Lightroom, it's the very last place to make adjustments. These are presets and snapshots. The exact same controls here, so you would use it the same way. Also, within this panel, there's a few other things that are worth explaining here, just to understand what they are. The, the saturation sliders are really where all the fun is. That's where you're gonna get the, the biggest bang for your buck out of this. But let's just kind of go through some of the other options. Uh, starting from the profile is one other place where if you're trying to boost color, you can try these other profiles. Most of them are irrelevant. For example, anything marked monochrome is just gonna turn the image black and white. So if you're trying to make black and white images, by all means, you can try this. I think there are probably better approaches, but that's one way. There is camera landscape, which sounds pretty interesting, and it's obviously added a lot of saturation. So let's go get rid of the saturation adjustments we made because it's sort of unfair to throw those on top. So we can see here was the Adobe standard. This is the default versus the camera landscape. And what I like about camera landscape is it's done a great job of bringing a little bit more color and punch to that sky, but it adds dramatic contrast. Take a look at the shadows on the rock here. This rock is just about gone. If we look back where we started, there was a lot of rock detail. And when we go to camera landscape, it's lost. So you could go back and punch up your shadows to try and restore that. That's one way to work with this tool. So certainly that's one way you can get more color is go switch to camera landscape and then boost up your saturation from there. Another one that I like, and I like this even more, is camera vivid. And when you watch that adjustment, notice the image is just a little bit brighter. I find that camera vivid is probably less destructive to the tones. Both of them really block up the shadows. And if you don't open up the shadows, you're gonna have problems. So when you switch to these other profiles, you definitely need to make some offsetting adjustments up in the basic tonal adjustments or things are just not gonna look quite right in your shadows. And you can watch your highlights too. It is, it's a high contrast profile. I generally speaking, just leave things on Adobe Standard, but it's good to know that that's an option. Up top here is the process version. If you're not familiar with this, essentially version four is what you should use for all new images. The only reason to ever use version one or two is because you have an image you processed you know, at least seven or 10 years ago that's in the old process version. The shadows and highlights and clarity in, in these older versions are just vastly inferior to what's in version three and four. Version three and four are essentially the same thing. The only difference between them is if you're in version three, you technically wouldn't have access to the new range mask. So if I go and make an adjustment, we can see there's the rain ma range mask. Notice that we can see it here. If I just leave this visible here, notice we've already kind of switched to process version four. So if I go to version three, you'll notice as soon as I try and make a range mask, Lightroom pushes me to version four. So version four and version three, they're, they're so identical that 
light, uh, that Adobe has made it just the default to automatically upgrade you to version four if you're trying to use a range mask. So I would just leave this in version four. There is no benefit to the old versions unless you've already processed a bunch of images and you don't wanna spend the time to make other adjustments. Because if you do switch from say version one or two to version four, then you're gonna to have to go back up and, and change because you instead of highlights and, and shadows and all, you're gonna see different recovery tools here. So you will have to make some adjustments. Then we have the uh, the shadow tint. So this is gonna push things you know, towards the magenta and green tones if you wanna play with this. It's a way of adding a little bit of color grading to your image if you like. Probably most people should just leave this alone. It's an easy way to screw up your color balance, but it, it can be nice for creative effect and there's a few situations where I use it, but generally speaking, I would leave that alone. And then we have the hue sliders under the red, green, and blue. These are kind of nice for making some color adjustments. So if I have a sunset like this and it looks a little bit yellow, and let's say I wanna push it more towards an orange or a red, well, I can move the hue. And Lightroom is giving you this cue that if I move this direction, reds are getting more kind of red and magenta, and to the right, they're getting more orange. So if I push in this direction, notice that's exactly what we're getting. We're getting more of a red kind of color to the sunset. That's not a very nice adjustment. Let's see what happens when we go in the other direction. Well, now we're getting more of a yellow sunset. And you can see that big moves are probably not what you want to do here. Small moves are gonna give you a more natural look. That, to me, looks better than the original. It's just a slight little color adjustment. Same thing, you can move the, the hue and the greens, make it a little bit more kind of uh, yellowish there, or make it a little bit more red. So you, the, the color here is, is kind of telling you what's gonna happen to green, moving more aqua. It doesn't really tell you what happens to other colors. So you just have to play with this. It, it's suggesting aqua, but obviously we're getting more of a red color out of the existing yellows. And then with blue, notice we're getting a horrible green if we move to the right, we move to the left, we're getting a nice red. So if I wanna make more of a reddish sunset, I can push the blue just you know as much as I want over here, and maybe we push that red a little bit, and now we've kinda of gone from here to here, and I like that color adjustment, so I might use that in conjunction with the other saturation adjustments we made. Now, notice that, you know, what was, you know, a slider I could push way to the right before. Now, because of the hue change, I can't push as far. So these are all interactive, and you're gonna have to, you know, as you move one, you need to think about moving the others. They're not independent sliders. So there's a bit of trial and error with this to get the look you want, but as you can see, it's done just an amazing job taking this, you know, this original raw with some minor adjustments and then throwing this color on top of it. It's just a much more dramatic looking sunset. So that's why I love the camera calibration tool. Definitely go check it out. And if you enjoyed this video, please click subscribe and ring the bell to make sure you get notified when I post new tutorials on YouTube.